Greetings everyone, I'm Karen Jane Casey and this is Turn to God with Karen. You might be wondering, what is this podcast about and who is it for? It's on this podcast that we talk about trials and circumstances, challenges that we face, and the choices we make. We can always turn to the Lord. In this message, it is for each and every one of us, regardless of how good our life may seem right now or how deep and dark our troubles may be. And you may be a devout believer in the Lord or someone who questions everything. In this podcast, we ask hard questions like, how can I overcome this? Am I alone? How can my broken heart be healed? And is there a hope for a good future for me? My favorite scripture for this podcast is Psalm 34, 18. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted and saves those who are crushed in spirit. During this 15-minute episode, I want to assure you that I will not be lecturing down at you. I will not be yelling and preaching at you. Instead, I'm sharing with you what I've learned along my journey, and I'm still learning. We learn together, and I encourage you to share what you've learned. Your testimony is important, and someone does need to hear it. What you have to say will resonate with someone. Dear Heavenly Father, I praise you now for all that you've done. Help me, Lord, as we do this episode together. Let me use your words, your wisdom, your mercy, your healing for us all. In Jesus' name, amen. Today's episode title is Learn Life Lessons. Well, we all hope to learn from what we have experienced in life, don't we? How many of us have lived to believe that there is a season for everything under the sun? And here I'm not talking about the natural seasons, winter, spring, summer, and fall. I'm talking about the seasons in our own lives. Seasons of change that we may experience. We've all experienced changes in our own seasons of life, haven't we? And with this pandemic, there's a whole unique season of change for each of us. How did we do with our changes? Did we learn anything when we faced trials and problems? Well, here's a message of truth from Ecclesiastes Chapter 3, it's just 8 verses, 1 through 8, that I'm going to be speaking. I hope that we can agree with what we hear. Ready or not, whether we learn anything from it or not, our season of change will happen. So now I'm reading from Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 through 8. A time for everything. For everything there is a season, a time for every activity under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to be healed, a time to tear down and a time to build up, a time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather the stones, and a time to embrace and a time to turn away. Time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time for war and a time for peace. As we pass through the various seasons in our lives, it's so important that we learn the lessons that are given us along the way. And we may miss it. We may miss the whole thing but we will get another opportunity if we do. What are some of the things that we've learned during the pandemic, for instance? One, number one, we're not in control of what might happen one day to the next with our health, with our jobs, with our opportunities. We're not in control. It's not important to be busy constantly chasing after our tails But what we do need to spend our quality time on is the Lord and our loved ones. It helped us get our priorities straight. How much of our focus has been on the Lord who created us? And how much did we depend on him versus taking care of ourselves and feeling that we were self-sufficient? 
We learned from that too, didn't we? <laughs> How many of us have realized that our purpose in life may not be what we thought it was originally? In other words, have some doors been shut as a result of this pandemic and other doors have opened up? Before the pandemic in January, I had realized I had too much on my plate. I was stressed out trying to carry weight or operate in too many areas. I thought they were all good, but I was running around not really doing quality time on any of it because it was too much quantity. Can anyone resonate with that? I had already begun to cut down on my busy schedule and I began to write. In March, that's when it hit our area, we all began to feel the effects of a tremendous shutdown in socializing, in travel, and in work areas. Families were suddenly eating together again. That was a good thing, wasn't it? Everything suddenly changed. It gave us time to reflect, to reflect on the season that we were in then. The quiet solitude brought breeding ground for my next book and I realized that I truly love to write. How many others have discovered through this pandemic that they have a different calling than they originally thought, that they enjoy doing different things than they had thought they were. My book will be published in July this year. A new song rises up, sharing struggles toward salvation. In this, I share bits and pieces of my testimony with lessons learned and with ample scripture to support it. During my writing, I faced a series of challenges. Well, one of them being the pandemic, but the writing continued to flow. And before reaching the end, the Lord gave me the next book to be written. So I think I've discovered my calling for in this season. In this season, I am a writer. What have you discovered during your period of change? What will you be doing differently because of what you've learned? Has your focus changed toward family, toward work, toward your health, toward the Lord? Where did your focus change? I hope that you stop and take an assessment of all that has changed for you and the lessons you have learned. I want to read to you something that King Solomon wrote. And you might recall that King Solomon was the son of King David, and he was known for being very wise and very wealthy, and he was close. This scripture is in Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 6, and it's full of wisdom and appears to apply to our daily lives today. Proverbs 3, verse 5 through 6, Wisdom's Guidance. Trust in the Lord completely and do not rely on your own opinions. Isn't that something we learned? With all your heart, rely on him to guide you and he will lead you in every decision you make. Become intimate with him in whatever you do and he will lead you wherever you go. So that's something that is important to me when I pray, I ask the Lord to give me the desires and the dreams that he wants me to have and then to guide my steps. Of all the things I have learned with the changes we faced in this season of the pandemic, it is that we are not self-sufficient. We are not in control. We are dependent on the living God. With that knowledge, how do we need to learn to change our attitude and our posture what is the Lord wanting to tell you during this season? Do you need to renew your goals? Reevaluate them. Your intentions, the career path that you've chosen. Have you turned to God for forgiveness, rescue, and salvation through Jesus Christ? Hasn't the pandemic taught you another important thing about the changing seasons? And that is... We don't know what tomorrow will bring. We don't know. We don't control the next day, our next breath. Therefore, some decisions need to make, be made without delay. There's an urgency. Turning to the Lord should be the top of your priorities for your future. 
As I mentioned in a previous episode, when we turn to God for repentance and believing in Jesus Christ, we change our mind, our thinking. We may start in a sinful life, but when we accept Jesus, we are new creatures. We become new creatures in Christ and we are forever changed. We have a good future. Let me share with you a portion from Colossians chapter 3, and I'm just reading two verses, 8 through 10. Oh, that's three. <laughs> but now it's time to eliminate them from your lives once and for all. And what are these things? Anger, fits of rage, all forms of hatred, cursing, filthy speech, and lying. Lay aside your old Adam self with its masquerade and disguise. For you have acquired new creation life, which is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you. So let me ask you this. What is your standing with the Lord right this minute? Regardless of what your troubles may be, he is well able to deliver you from them all. I pray that you choose to turn to God without delay. If you believe that you're not deserving of anything from the Lord or any help from him, you would be right. None of us are deserving. But when we accept Jesus, we are covered by his blood and he paid the price for our sins. Our God is merciful. We have the evidence of how much our Heavenly Father truly loves us. John 3.16 evidences that God sacrificed his only begotten Son for us. Let me read it. For God to love the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus himself said this in John 14, 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. If we believe, then we need to tell him. We have free will so we can make that decision on our own. Regardless where you stand today in your relationship with the Lord, I encourage you to pray with me right now. Pray out loud. Dear, dear Lord Jesus, I know that you are the only begotten Son of God, and I know that you suffered on the cross for me, for my sins, and you paid for my sins. You defeated death. You arose from the grave in three days. But I'm a sinner. I repent from my sins, and I walk away from my sinful life. But I'm going to need you to help me because I'm going to be tempted. I need you, Jesus. I am hopeless. I am nothing without you. So I ask you, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior, and I will serve you all of my life. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, in this prayer, you're telling the Lord that you believe and you're sincerely choosing to walk away from your sinful life, and he'll help you in that and you're pledging to serve Jesus all of your life. I encourage you to study the word of God and pray so that you can have an understanding of the promises that he offers and you can praise and obey and with gratitude as you grow in your faith. You can find inner peace and joy in the midst of your challenges. In all of that, you're developing a greater, a deeper relationship with Jesus and in the process, you're becoming more and more like him. You will always be considering, what would Jesus do in this situation? I encourage you to pray, the, to read the book of Psalms in the Old Testament, and then see how King David prayed when he faced trials and tribulations, tremendous life-threatening circumstances. This is how I often pray in this season. And I'm praying about my own challenges and those of the world. I invite you to join me in this type of prayer right now. Dear Heavenly Father, you are the King of the universe. You are the creator of all living things. And we know that you love your children, believers in Jesus, profoundly. Lord, nothing happens without your knowledge. You, nothing happens that you don't have control over it. So we ask you now, Lord, Open our eyes. 
cause us to see our wrongdoing. Give us the gift of, of conviction. Show us our wickedness so we can repent from it and have mercy on us, Lord. We ask you to cause a great revival throughout the United States, throughout the world. But in bring change to each and every person. Dear Father, we see that there is evil all around us. We ask you to cause the enemies fiery darts, their flaming arrows, and their enemy attacks to fall upon themselves and not upon your children, Lord. Cause your enemies to be completely exposed, Lord, so that they are as nothing. Heal and protect your children, Lord. Rescue us. Nothing is too great for you to handle in your perfect way and in your perfect timing. We believe, we know that with God, all things are possible. We praise you for all that you've done in our lives and for all that you've brought us through. You are our strength and our refuge in times of trouble. Please forgive us of our sins and help us to forgive those who have offended us. We praise you always for your grace through Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, thank you for joining me in this episode of Turn to God with Karen. This is Karen Jane Casey, author, speaker, domestic violence advocate, and ambassador for Christ. Stay tuned for Turn to God with Karen every Monday morning at 6.30 Eastern Standard Time. You can download and listen anytime. You can simply Google the podcast by name and find the episodes listed. We're available on stormtalk365radio.com. We're also on iTunes, Twitter, Alexa on Amazon, on Amazon hosted by iHeartRadio and Spotify. Our platform is Spreaker.com. I invite you to share any comments, suggestions. Your feedback is always welcome. You can go to my website, KarenJaneCasey.com. That's C-A-R-I-N-J-A-Y-N-E-C-A-S-E-Y. When you go to my website, you'll also see information about books that I've written. My books are available on Amazon.com and Kindle. And you can find all of my videos at Karen Jane Casey on YouTube. If you go there, I hope that you will subscribe to my YouTube channel. Well, thank you and God bless.